What's happening my block buddies? We're finally back and with a new video on the Switch, the Nintendo Switch, of course Nintendo's new console. And Blood Content has been very interested in this new console for a long time, ever since it was announced. And today we actually have some more information, even though Nintendo said that they didn't really want to give more information until next year. Probably because, yeah, that one three minute trailer kind of did everything to, you know, excite us for the console and not really say any more about it, just makes us, you know, make the hype train go faster. But I think, you know, sprinkling those details in could help uh, go a long way. And instead of an investors meeting, Nintendo's uh, new boss, uh, Kimishima, has actually done a QA uh, with a Japanese paper, and we have found an English translation of this. Uh, it could be very interesting to, uh, you know, get through. So they talk a little bit about uh, the Nintendo Switch, of course, about their hardware plan. They talk a little bit about what uh, is going on with the Nintendo 3DS as well, which I think a lot of you guys are very interested about, you know, is it going to replace that or not? Um, and also, you know, about the flexibility of the Nintendo Switch, everything like that. And uh, it was kind of weird how Nintendo announced the console as well with that video. So uh, maybe... You know, they have some thoughts about that, and also if that console was uh, made for hardcore gamers or not. So, let's just dive into this interview, because there are so many interesting points that we can actually find some details that tell us a lot more about the Switch than I think they meant uh, with this uh, little Q&A. And having it translated is such a good thing, so thank you uh, www.bloomberg.com. Uh, for translating this. Thank you. So yeah, it's been a year since uh, Tatsumi Kishimishima became president of Nintendo uh, Of course taking it over from Satoru Iwata. God rest his soul uh, But of course the Nintendo Switch is the new console that the Kyoto based company will start selling in March And of course everything will be about it. Um, there's also a lot of switches with Nintendo coming uh, with uh, mobile gaming making a big uh, you know splash with uh, Super Mario Run and also we already had Pokemon Go and there are theme parks coming, uh, which I am very, very excited about. And I will actually take a lot of trips to the uh, United States to just go to those uh, theme parks. Uh, maybe we should make a video on that later. Anyway, and, and some merchandising too. Um, so yeah, Kimishima sat down with Bloomberg News uh, in this interview. Uh, and he talked a little bit more about Switch, uh, but also some other things. The first question is, what can you say about your first year in charge? So Kimishima actually said three years ago, all of us together, the previous president, uh, the technology head, and Shigeru Miyamoto, the creative head, created a plan to revitalize our business, which included smart devices, our new hardware, and maximizing our intellectual property. And this point, you know, maximizing uh, their intellectual property is what they're doing with all the things that they said before, right? Theme parks, and now maybe movies, stuff like that. So uh, quite simply, he says, the biggest issue was not about whether I change this, but how do I execute these projects? Now, the critical period is finally here. From the end of this fiscal period and into the next one is when we actually show the product and deliver it to our customers. So, the next question is, why did Nintendo decide to combine household and portable gaming? Kimishima says, we didn't just want a successor to the Wii U or 3DS. And, you know, the gaming community agrees with you guys a lot. Uh, he says, so our original concept was, what kind of new experience can we create? And what we showed this time was an object that's both stationary and one you can take outside to play with anyone you want. Kimishima, thank you so much for this. Uh, the next question is, will you discontinue the 3DS? That's actually pretty head-on from Bloomberg Technology. Thank you so much for being so direct. Kimishima answers, thanks to our software, the 3DS hardware is still growing. So that business still has momentum. And certainly, rather than being cannibalized by the Switch, we think the 3DS can continue in its own form. Now, I love that Kimishima is trying here. I don't really believe uh, that that is ultimately going to happen. I think a lot of the developers that want to make games will do it for, you know, the other console that is a handheld but has, you know, uh, the potential to be played on a big screen and can even function as a console and as a handle at the same time. I don't think people will say, let's just do this for the 3DS, right? Uh, other than, you know, games having two screens uh, and needing that. So to me, I I think that they will make some 3DS games, but I think slowly, you know, all the developers will kind of uh, rally around that Nintendo Switch. The next question is, is the Switch part of a bigger hardware plan? The part we've shown says Kimishima, this time is just a conceptual image of how the Switch is different from the Wii U and previous systems. 
This is very important, guys. Kimishima is actually saying that this is a conceptual image, right? So probably the games that we saw are sort of not, you know, a perfect indication of what's coming. You know, with the Mario Kart game, with the Splatoon game, maybe they will make a new game in the series. Maybe, you know, it isn't really what we've seen so far. I would go as far as saying these are just like demos, like test demos. Uh, he says, going forward, of course, in terms of what kind of accessories will come out, we want to show this in January and later. By no means was that everything. So there are more accessories coming, right? Um, we kind of expected this. Nintendo loves their accessories so much. Um, and it's no surprise that there's a lot more, you know, hardware accessories coming for that uh, console. But yeah, it's it's part of a bigger hardware plan for sure. But we've seen most of it. We've seen the, the basic gist of it, right? Um, the next question is, is there a chance that we will see Switch evolve after it's released in March? Like Kimishima answers, what we haven't shown you yet is the software lineup. We also haven't shown all of our first party software. Okay, so when we make new hardware, how it works with our software is critical. This is what we weren't able to show. We want people to touch the device in January and experience the software for themselves. Okay, January. We want people to touch the device in January. That's so darn close. So are there going to be press events? Because blocked content wants a ticket right now. Anyway, it seems like the Switch, you know, the games kind of need to be still, you know, prepared. And they weren't ready yet in time for that trailer. Which to me is pretty weird because, right, they don't record that footage with actual gameplay on the screens, right? It's just a green screen with some, you know, crosses on it. Um, and I don't think that it would be weird to, you know, implement screens, you know, very last minute. Uh, so to me, it's pretty weird that they weren't able to show things off. What can you do in these three months that uh, is so critical to being able to play a demo, you know, on a show floor? It's weird to me. They probably already have the art assets and some gameplay. So why didn't you show more than just, you know, Mario Kart 8 with one new character and two items? It's pretty weird to me. Anyway, the next question is, Will users be able to flexibly change its form? Then Kimishima has, a, has an answer. He says, We have shown you various scenarios. It will allow everyone to come together to play a game or let you play by yourself at home. And depending on the software, it will also allow you to do things beyond that. As the previous president said, when it comes to gaming, it, it's not just about being holed up inside the house, but doing it outside in different ways. That doesn't just mean under a blue sky, but with other people, and for example, as we showed in the video, in different places. Inside of the plane, inside of the car, at all the places where people get together. Okay, uh, yeah, so flexibility is more about the places and not about the console itself. The next question from Bloomberg Technology is quite direct. Uh, he's saying, uh, he's asking, the video didn't seem like a typical Nintendo promotion. It was aimed at an audience that you would expect for Sony or Apple. Now, Kimishima says, as the name implies, we're switching a lot of things. But we have no interest in switching our customers. We have no intention of just going after a certain age group. Depending on the kind of software that comes out, families and kids will be able to play too. The titles we did show, those are games for people who understand, they will grasp it right away, but for families and kids, we want them to understand by actually experiencing it. So I love this approach, right? Uh, the trailer was made for people that kind of already get it, and people who you know are more of a casual gamer, they actually need to play to experience, so you can't really show it in a video, and Nintendo got the hint finally, and uh, I like that they say that they will treat them differently and not just you know, pile them up into the same category. So the next question, so would you say the video was made for hardcore gamers? Very nice. Uh, and then Kimishima answers, our core philosophy is that we want to increase the number of gamers at all ages. And there's no change to that. So we have no intention to lean towards core gamers, but to communicate our new idea, when you think about who will understand it first, naturally it will be the people who really understand games. To communicate that as quickly as possible, we focused on these folks who really understand games. Exactly, and you did great, Kimishima. Awesome. So the next question is, what would you say is the core concept or technology behind the Switch? Is what we saw in the video the main device, or is there more? Kimishima says, I'm afraid that will get into the hardware spec, so I'd like you to wait until January. What you saw is the core. So it is an answer, but it's kind of saying, hey, there is some more but uh, I'm not willing to talk about it right now, which is okay, right? We saw the core and we all love the core. We all love what the Switch is about, right? If you don't, 
leave a comment and I will download it. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, the next question is, there seem to be many possibilities for your hardware and software ecosystem. What do you think of hardware tie-ups with other companies? Kimishima says, if you ask me if it's possible in terms of if we're getting ready, the best takeaway for now is that no, this is not happening at this moment. But in terms of the various ways you can play, you will have to see it together with the software and accessories that we'll have, which we will reveal in January. In terms of attachments to the core part, that is the switch, it may be appropriate to call them accessories. Or it might be better to call them add-on hardware, but it's probably more correct to call them accessories. You can assume that there will be a wider array. So I don't really like this all that much, you know, uh, all these, you know, different accessories with the console. I just want to have this one thing and not buy 10 million other things that I don't really need and will just buy for one game. So I really hope they do it well this time because I don't really want to get more Wii wheels up in my closets. That's, uh, that's uh, some stuff that I just don't need. So Nintendo, just focus on the Switch, focus on that controller, please. So the next question is, what's your view on virtual reality? And I really want to know this answer, so Nintendo, take it away. He says, Miyamoto has talked about this several times. It's not that we're uninterested. In fact, we have a lot of interest. VR offers the experience of playing in a new way. But that depends on the software and how you use it to play, especially when it comes to games and beyond games, it also applies to other non-game things, so it is something to look forward to. So, they ask a little bit more, you know, will Switch have VR capabilities? Are you developing VR that will connect to Switch? Kimishima says, if you asked if, yeah, this might be possible in the future, certainly we can't say no. In terms of how it can be used for gaming, it's something we must consider. It depends on the system specifications. I can't say that we have no interest in VR because VR offers new ways of playing, but that depends on what kind of software can be played. But what kind of software works, that's only something you only know once you actually experience it. And our games are ones that are usually played for a long time. And I love that he's saying that. And that was the philosophy behind the GameCube, right? To buy these games and play them, you know, for years on end and have them and have these, you know, big experiences that are finished and whole and awesome. So I love that they're still focusing on that and saying, yeah, VR is this thing that, you know, could pass over, you know, could not be a big thing anymore in about one or two years. So they're kind of, you know, waiting it out and seeing what is, you know, being done with that idea. Uh, the next question is, what are your expectations for Super Mario Run? Kimishima says, in terms of expectations, we all saw what happened when we delivered Pokemon Go. And honestly, I was quite surprised by it myself. There's no doubt that more people are using smartphones to play games. And as this time we're using Mario, that's a very important intellectual property for us. And that's why Miyamoto's team is working on now making sure it spreads out just as quickly as Pokemon Go. So our expectations are big. And as Tim Cook mentioned, more than 20 million people have already registered to receive notifications when the game is available. In terms of the game itself, you can download it and play a certain part of it and then pay a fixed price and then play it over and over as many times as you want without having to pay anything extra. And that should give peace of mind that kids can play it. And we're hoping that that will help it become more popular. The next question is, what is Nintendo's philosophy towards smartphone games? He says, I already explained the three points at today's investors meeting. Oh wait, so it did happen? Wow. So all the information is getting bottled up right now. <laughs> he says, our main business is the hardware software business. In addition, our smartphone business has helped sell a lot of our existing packages. And it has really proved our original thesis by releasing our software on the smartphone, it positively impacts our existing hardware and software business. And that's precisely the synergy effect we were expecting. And as that has been proven correct, we have more confidence. So more smartphone stuff coming. Uh, they ask, where do smartphones and Switch fit into your ecosystem? There's an image of our future that our previous president painted two years ago. We had what we called an X, which is now the Switch, and surrounding it are a business for smartphones, theme parks, movie-related businesses. Where at the start, you will see various connections between our smartphones, theme parks, movie-related business, and merchandising that use our intellectual property. I'm very happy about that. Uh, keep it coming. I really want to see movies for Nintendo characters. We'll have a discussion on that very soon. What are your expectations for the Switch? He says in terms of how many units it will sell, 
We're looking at past examples where competitors and our own we had a lot of momentum. And that means the first year and there it goes on sale will be extremely important. The next question is, uh, yeah, were you surprised at the market's reaction to the Switch video with, with shares falling? To tell you the truth, he says, I was surprised. I had wondered about that reaction, but I don't understand why. And there's no real point in me talking about the stock price. Okay, he's getting a bit, uh, you know, defensive on that one. Anyway, the next question is, what's your assessment of where Nintendo is at in terms of profitability and sales? He answers, our revenue has fallen for eight straight years. What we aim for is to increase the number of people who play games. We want to deliver all kinds of new surprises to our customers, and it's through their support that our revenue increases. That's the end result. But if that result doesn't show, that means we weren't able to deliver. Next year is when we will see the result. This uh, is very sad to read. You know, Nintendo uh, has seen their revenue fall for eight straight years, and that is a sad pill to swallow. And I love that he is actually talking about that in this interview. So um, props to him for actually sticking to his guns and, you know, saying this. And I think that, you know, being that open and honest in an interview like this shows that he is a leader that can, you know, take defeat and get back up on his feet too. So uh, I love that. Very cool. Uh, then the final question actually is, Iwata-san often mentioned 100 billion yen as being an appropriate level of operating profit for Nintendo. Is that a goal for you? Kimishima's final answer is, we want to get back to those figures. That's the level that everyone is talking about, and that's what we want to achieve. But as you know, foreign exchange has a tremendous impact, so depending on the level of our operating profit, it might change quite a bit, but it is something we are watching very closely. And that's it. Um, thank you so much, Bloomberg Technology, for this interview. It gave us a lot more insight into the you know insides of Nintendo, and also, we really don't know that much about Kimishima himself, and... We actually now kind of know how he operates and how he sees the business. He's kind of, you know, uh, not really changing things around, but just seeing how he can adequately, like, place these projects into better hands and uh, to make, um, you know, a big comeback like they did with the Wii. They're kind of looking to, you know, past times to see where things went wrong, where things went great. And they're trying to, you know, relive those memories. And also, he's putting a big focus on bring Nintendo's characters to life in different ways. So in the theme parks, in the merchandise, and also, of course, in movies. I can't wait for that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, I just wanted to translate this interview for you guys and, you know, speak it. So you might not want to read that whole article. You might just want to listen to my beautiful voice the whole day. Um, you can. And thank you for listening. Uh, we are Blocked Content. Remember, we are very close to a thousand subscribers. I'm so very happy. We've only been active for about four months and already being close to a thousand subscribers is an extremely big deal and to me it is just I can't even say it. you know it's so incredibly awesome and um, there is actually a goodie challenge that is the Super Mario Maker goodie challenge if you want to win these awesome magnets for on your fridge or wherever you want you can actually create your own Super Mario Maker level just place a comment down below and the most unique comment deserves the awesome magnets anyway we are block content Thank you so much for watching and be sure to press that subscribe button and become part of our family because we're almost hitting a thousand likes and you could be the one who already subscribed when we, before we hit a thousand. So thank you so much and we'll see you guys around the corner where there's always more Nintendo Switch news.